hidden in forests, embedded in volcanic earth, created by the hand of man, lies the most legendary and dangerous racetrack in the world, the Nürburgring Nordschleife. For 80 years, knights in leather and linen armor on mounts of steel have battled here for honor, trophies, and the fastest time. 20.83 kilometers long, 73 corners, and 290 meter altitude difference. Horsepower junkies make pilgrimages here like Muslims to Mecca. In this playground for men, success is still the result of genuine and honest hard work, a German legend. But in the Far East, in the land of office-bound worker bees and console culture, the Nissanoids are arming themselves to attack the German racing establishment. On foreign soil, they snatch at the crown of sports car construction, the record time on the Nürburgring Nordschleife, their weapon, the new Nissan GTR. April 2009, and Nissan's head tester, Toshio Suzuki, puts in an extraordinary time of 7 minutes 27 in the 2010 model of the GTR. The Porsche GT2 took 6 seconds longer, leaving the Germans quaking. Now our Tamagotchi-playing friends from Japan think they want to challenge us over lap times on the Nordschleife. The Nissan GTR is supposed to have driven a 7 minute 27 lap. Godzilla or Tamaguchi will find out today. The comparison, two twin turbos, one a flat engine, the other a V6. How will the Nissan GTR perform against its arch rival Porsche Turbo? Nicely away at the start, we're going to floor this machine. Fit for the Nordschleife before the first lap, the Japanese car gets a going over by the Nürburgring specialists at RSR. Patrick explains to Christian that he has the new Nissan GTR with him. Christian is to make it just right for the Nordschleife, tires, suspension, everything. No problem for the guys at RSR, says Christian. Together with Dunlop, Nissan has developed new tires for the GTR, tested on the Nordschleife, of course. Not even the oil has been left to chance by the engineers. A synthetic lubricant ensures lower friction. The question of optimum grip is solved with semi-slicks. Once they're warmed up, they almost weld the Nissan to the tarmac. And even the engine electronics get a Nordschleife setup. Nissan GTR. We were so desperate for this car that we couldn't wait until Nissan gave us one. Thank you very much, Paytech, for giving us this one. I promise I'll look after it. We've put semi-slicks on it, filled it up with fresh oil, and now the race mode is just being set up. Does it work? We're about to find out. Supercars, Nissan and records all go together. The predecessors of the GTR answered to the name of Skyline and had up to 500 horsepower. Idolized in Japan and the USA, they were unfortunately not available here in Germany. But the new one is, and it has impressive features. Four-wheel drive, transaxle double clutch, the most modern technology tames the beast, a V6 twin turbo with 485 horsepower. Now let's hand it over to Patrick Kamikaze Simon. The first meters in the Nissan aren't bad. The car is really as stiff as a board on the track. A little bit of understeer going into the slow corners. We'll have to be careful about that. You can really notice how the mass is shifting. At 1,750 kilos, the Japanese car is no lightweight. The steering has good transmission, nice and direct. All you have to do is steer in and bam, it's around the corner. There's a load change, but even so, if you keep the thrust up, it's stable. Keep the thrust up, no problem. From 3,200 revs, the engine reports full steam ahead, thanks to 588 newton meters of torque. 
Acceleration in this car is like taking off from an aircraft carrier. Not only because the engine just powers through without any interruption of traction, but the sound, too. It's like a turbine. There's such pull. What's missing is some of that feeling of, oh, here comes the force, because it's actually very even. At the top end, around six and a half, then it thins out a bit and you need to change gear. But that's no problem. The six-speed dual-clutch gearbox sits on the rear axle. This method of construction is what the professionals call transaxle. The power is brought onto the road by the intelligent four-wheel system, Atesa, which transfers up to 50% to the front axle when necessary. It's a little bit stupid how the gear switch is attached to the steering wheel. The DSG gearbox allows you to brake late into the corner and change down when you're still steering. And with this stationary switch on the steering wheel, I'd like to change down now. But I have to take my hand off so that I can change gear. I prefer switches which move with the steering wheel. If you look at the competition, Porsche, Ferrari, Lamborghini, they all have round, feminine shapes. But this thing is angular, compact, attack, off you go. Have a look. A request for the ladies, please go and paint your nails or take the garbage out. Leave the men alone for a minute. You won't like what's coming next anyway. The Nissan GTR is the Y chromosome in sports car DNA. Beauty and grace are crossed out in the GTR dictionary. This lump of metal is as feminine as a wife beater shirt over a beer belly. Wide hoods, wide mud flaps, perforated Brembo brakes with internal ventilation. And a spoiler that's big enough to set up a bar on. Nought to 100 in 3.6 seconds, top speed 314. And saving the best for last, this supercar costs just 81,000 euros. Here's the Vipperman, the curb is on the right. The suspension absorbs that wonderfully thanks to Bilstein shocks. Then quickly into the anchor. It's very easy to get the right amount of braking, you have good feedback. The ABS regulates it very sensitively. It's not rough, it's very delicate and sensitive. Even if you brake on bumps. So even if the car is bouncing a lot, you have a very delicate setup for the ABS. In the carousel, you're accelerated through, regardless of whether you're driving the Nissan or Porsche. But otherwise, it's very calm and very easy to drive. Pflanzgarten now, the car takes off for a moment and then bam, you're completely relaxed. You just sit in here and drive, not quite as easily as going for Sunday brunch, but pretty relaxed. You don't have this immense stress factor that you're fighting and cranking and working and everything for every lap on the Nordschleife. It's easy to handle, it's a bit like this interior style, a bit PlayStation-like. You don't feel like you're on the Nordschleife going for a lap time of well under eight minutes. Nonetheless, kids should keep their hands off this Japanese missile and stick to abusing their joypads. Sports seats in leather are standard in the Japanese sports car. If you order the premium edition, there's also a Bose sound system. The cost with all extras, 85,200 euros. The GTR is honest, sporty, and simply straightforward. No style icon. Our US import is well finished, the ambiance is cool, and the materials used are almost premium. The real eye catcher in the cockpit is an enormous onboard computer in the center console. 300 settings are available, an electronic cluster for PlayStation junkies. What's really amazing is that you can see everything here on your display. You can switch here, then you can see the G-force, how much braking pressure you're giving in percent, how heavily you're on the gas. That's very PlayStation-y. 
If you wanted to control all of this, you'd never actually manage to drive. It's fun, but you need a passenger to take care of all of those things for you. Incidentally, the data can easily be analyzed at home on the computer. But back to the Nordschleife. Can the new GTR manage a lap time under 7 minutes 30? I have to say quite honestly, 7 minutes 27, if it's driven by a complete professional with no children, no family to worry about, maybe. Besides, competition is getting tight up there. Porsche is at the top and has been for more than six decades. The Porsche formula, rear wheel drive and flat engine power. Ready? Attack. In 1974, five magic letters appeared on the back of the 911 for the first time. Turbo. Simple, pithy, self-confident. The Porsche supercar was born. Thirty-five years and 200 more horsepower later, the current 997 Turbo relies on four-wheel drive for safety reasons. 480 horsepower, up to 680 newton meters of torque, and the drivetrain and tires whimper for mercy. Let's see what the top dog, the 911 Turbo, has to offer on the Nordschleife. The first thing you notice about the Nissan is how stiff the suspension is. In the Turbo, into the first corner, down into Hatzenbach, and it's as if there's a kangaroo juice in the tank. There isn't, is there? It's very soft. It's a turbo. Better take a GT3 or a GT2. Okay, but the Nissan's challenge was quite clearly to the 911 Turbo. The engine is old style. It's always nice to see how relaxed the power deployment can be in a turbo engine like this from Porsche. And the power is actually there up to 6,000 revs. Afterwards it drops a bit, you can feel that there's not so much thrust anymore. But until 6,000 it really powers forwards. Between 2,000 and 5,000 revs, the turbocharger with variable turbine geometry coaxes full torque out of the 3.6-litre flat engine. After 12.5 seconds, the turbo breaks the 200-kilometre mark and reaches its physical limits at 310. It's not a DSG gearbox, and we didn't want a Tiptronic either. We've got a typical Porsche and a simple, precise manual gearbox. Six gears, and it's still a lot of fun. And, I have to say, I just enjoyed it. I'd never known DSG in such a powerful car before, and you can brake coming into a lot of corners, and then just pull easily on the switch twice, and it changes the gear. We have to do all that by hand here. The turbo can reach 100 kilometers per hour in 3.9 seconds, or even two-tenths of a second faster with Tiptronic. In comparison with the Nissan, everything here is very clean, very tidy. In the Nissan, it's very playful. There are more buttons on the steering wheel than the Porsche has on its entire dashboard. These are two different worlds. The Porsche Turbo is an ambassador of the pure style of sports car. The driver studies classic dials, controls an Alcantara steering wheel, and prefers to change gears manually. In comparison with the Nissan, time seems to have stood still. Where the Porsche is significantly stronger is steering. Onto the brakes, change down, steer into the corner. The Nissan has strong understeer, but the 911 is significantly more stable. Both have sports tires, so it can't be down to the level of grip in the tires. There's a lot more mechanical drip here than in the Nissan. You can definitely feel that the Porsche is lighter, especially when braking. It's almost 160 kilos, but you always deduct on the brakes, at least when it comes down to weight, and there the Porsche is just stronger. 
Every Porsche model is born on the Nordschleife. The engineers have decades of experience here and that pays off. But a price of 60,000 euros more than the Nissan GTR is more than steep. Of course, the question is whether a Porsche Turbo like this is worth 60,000 euros more. Even in the configuration that we're driving here with Sport Chrono package and all these accessories, and when you look at the price of the Nissan, you can quite soberly say, I could get two Nissans for the price of one Porsche Turbo. I could take one in black and one in silver. Well, Patrick, not an easy decision. But which is faster? The challenge brings clarity. 21 kilometers around the Nürburgring Nordschleife in a Porsche Turbo and Nissan GTR is definitely pretty cool. But not everyone's taste. The Nordschleife is very special. Straight ahead goes up to the Döttinger Höhe and the whole thing is just under two kilometers and that's where we'll find out a drag race between the two. away at the start. We're going to floor this machine. One eighty, one ninety. Hello. Hello. Here comes the turbo. Two hundred. Hey, two thirty, and it's racing away from me. Christ Almighty! As far as the bridge, maybe we can get a bit more. Two fifty. Come on, come on. Wing mirrors in. Really well away at the start, but then at the top from 200, the turbo is just a force. Dear God. The Nissan really does knock you for six. They don't just play Tamagotchi, they also know how to do things seriously. The Nissan is stiff as a board on the Nordschleife, no bounce, nothing. Sensational and completely easy to drive. Okay, we'd probably have to turn off the water at Porsche headquarters to make them forget how to put real power in a car. It has real force behind it. It's just a shame that it wasn't enough for the lap time. Why do they always have to be building on the Nürburgring when I'm here? I'd have loved to know what the stopwatch would have read.